Savak. Because today we're going to make Noble Pursuit, the Gerudo Super Cocktail from Breath of the Wild and also Hyrule Warriors, the time of calamity. Ha! Yeah! <laughs> All right, so I came around to finally playing Breath of the Wild just a bit late, okay? But uh, my daughter and I, we've been playing it together for a while now, so I think I'm caught back up to speed. She is uh, five and uh, is afraid of the controls, which I'm like encouraging her to get over and just like play games on her own. But like on the other hand, right now, me and her playing games means her like sitting next to me, holding onto my arm while I play the game. And like she uses her, her Triforce power because she likes to tell me she's Zelda. Also, she has a whole other mythology going on around Zelda that she's invented about the 12 keystones who are these women spirit creatures of power. And they all have names that she's come up with and she'll like get up and say, dad, I'm going to go get somebody. And I was like, oh, okay, great. And then she leaves the room and comes back and she comes back in and she goes, it's me, Rika Semblia, the keystone of water. She is a very theatrical child. It's a great deal for me because I get to do parenting three or four hours a night. Real quality bonding time, Megan. I don't know what to tell you, I'm parenting in here. You're just playing video games. No, I'm not just playing video games. I'm parenting. Anyway, there is a drink mentioned in it called a Noble Pursuit, and then you find it in the Gerudo Wasteland, where you will find Pokey, uh, whom she is just lounging right across the access terminal of this Sheikah Shrine. Very offensive to me uh, and she just won't budge unless you get her her favorite drink which actually i can relate to the gerudo tavern keeper named furosa she's not normally going to make any for link because he is too young apparently but for pokey for pokey no problem she's a regular you just got to go get me some ice and yada 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 we got ourselves a side quest going on over here the thing is, Ferosa is really tight-lipped about her recipe for this beverage, and it left me, like, really almost nothing to go on. Um, and then I did a bunch of research on this, and I found out that a prequel game came out that I didn't play, I won't play, probably, called Hyrule Warriors Time of Calamity. And for some reason, when Link was, like, a hundred years younger in the Time of Calamity, he was old enough to make his own noble pursuits. I don't understand that, but whatever. As a result, we end up with a recipe for them. The recipe in that game calls for three hydromelons, three volt fruit, three palm fruit and three rock salt. Uh, now, none of that is alcoholic. I mean, through fermentation, we could make just about any of that alcoholic, but I don't think we want to do that. But I do honestly think that this drink is intended to be alcoholic just because of the way it's addressed in game. So that recipe is probably not going to give us the whole story, but that is a real solid start. And actually, like, if I'm not mistaken, I don't think limes or lemons or any kind of citrus at all show up as ingredients in Breath of the Wild ever. Citrus is assumed. Um, anyway, hydromelons, those are pretty obviously watermelon type things. They're called hydromelons. The palm fruit in the game is shown to be coconuts. There was a couple different ways they could have gone there. Palm fruit could also be dates. They grow on date palms. And volt fruit look almost identical to dragon fruit, right? Like identical. They grow on a slightly different tree, but like they're dragon fruit. And of course, rock salt. Rock salt is salt. Uh, we also know that the drink requires ice because of the side quest in Breath of the Wild, where you have to go get the ice. The in-game icon for the drink in Time of Calamity makes it look like it is served in a huge glass that is made of ice. That's gonna be a beyond me, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, like, even if I could make one of them, the way that I make this show, I would need to make at least four because they would constantly be melting. There'd be continuity issues, there'd be water everywhere. I can't even guarantee I could pull off one. Uh, it's not happening. I'm sorry. I just can't do it. So we're going to use a glass that is the style of glass it's emulating, but not made of ice. That inclusion of salt in the recipe and the Gerudo desert origins of the drink makes me think that the base spirit in this should probably be tequila. Once you start to think about that, I think a tequila, watermelon, dragon fruit, coconut thing, that doesn't sound wrong. That sounds like a good idea. So I played around with a few versions of this recipe. The one that I'm going to present right here is, that is the one that was good. So I made a syrup here. I'm going to call it Gerudo syrup. These little packets, they come in this bag of frozen dragon fruit puree. They're sold for like smoothies and stuff, right? But they're perfect for our purposes. Now, the thing of this is that their dragon fruits come in a couple different types, mainly a white fleshed type and a pink fleshed type. From the outside, they look almost identical. This might be a pink flesh type, if not for the fact that I know it's the white fleshed kind. I like the pink flesh. I don't think that they taste different and dragon fruit don't taste like much at all. They taste like a weak pear, kind of maybe some kiwi in there, but a kiwi is a much stronger flavor. A pear is a stronger flavor. But the recipe calls for volt fruit and here they are. Typically in my area, 
If you find dragon fruit in the grocery store, it's gonna be the white flesh kind. That's why I went with the frozen stuff that had the pink flesh. It's better for the syrup, it just looks nicer. So 200 grams of dragon fruit puree goes into the pan. Then I added 200 milliliters of water. So about equal parts, technically exactly equal parts, but because they're different densities, they might be different volumes. And now I added 400 grams of organic palm sugar. Interesting thing, I tested that in the syrup on a lark, kind of exploring other ways to honor the coconut slash palm fruit ingredient here. There's a lot of types of palm sugar. They are all derived from various parts of the palm tree. The one that I used is actually coconut sugar. It has a really chocolatey taste, which does come through in the final drink here. It adds a lot of depth to the flavor. I was really surprised by that. I had actually been, you know, one of these days I'm gonna play around palm sugar and I never got around to it. And then I put it in that syrup and I was like, wow, we kind of made chocolate, that's crazy. Heat that to a boil. Keep it stirring for a little while, um, and then when it's all done and dissolved, let it cool. Strain this when you bottle it though, because there's a lot of pulp and seeds in that dragon fruit puree. It kind of is it's a little thick, you know, it's not a little too thick. You wanna get as much of that pulp back out kind of as possible. Plenty is gonna go through your strainer. You definitely don't want the seeds in there. There it is, um, Gerudo syrup, or maybe just one version of Gerudo syrup. We did a really basic Gerudo syrup here, but I, I would say that the Gerudo probably make this a couple of different ways. A adding complexity to the syrup is not gonna be a mistake. So if you wanna go a little wild here, add some other stuff, rose water, orange blossom water, a little cinnamon, I think those are all great ideas. Maybe even a little cayenne pepper might work. I haven't tried it. Once we got the syrup, it's time to get on to the drink. I do think that this drink is best made in a blender. I guess you could try it another way, but I don't know how it's gonna turn out. I invented it in a blender. I've always built it in a blender. I am ashamed that my beautiful Vitamix blender carafe is permanently cloudy. I think it's just the nature of the plastic. It's not very videogenic. We're all just gonna have to cope, okay? In my blender, I'm gonna start uh, by adding just a quarter ounce of Gerudo syrup. And I am gonna mount my blender, I'm gonna put my scale under my blender because a few of these ingredients I'm gonna do by weight as well. Quarter ounce of Gerudo syrup, here we go. A little more than a quarter ounce, but that's okay, it's fine. Next, I want a quarter ounce of my standard simple syrup. Next, I'm gonna add about 60 grams of frozen watermelon chunks. You can cube and freeze a watermelon yourself, or you may find these kinds of smoothie ingredients pre-prepared at your grocery store. Same brand, Pitaya, Piti, Piti, Pitaya, Pitaya, uh, Pitaya, I pity ya, I pity the fool who freezes their own watermelons. That's a joke for boomers. Anyway, 60 grams of frozen watermelon chunk. Honestly, this is just like such a labor saver. There's really no reason not to use this stuff. You don't have to worry about it going bad or something like that. There we go, 60 grams. So the visual icon for this drink in the Age of Calamity shows a drink that's more straw colored than what we're gonna get here. And it's garnished with a wedge of melon that looks like watermelon on the outside, but which is actually really yellow inside. It makes sense, by the way, that if you were using a yellow melon, you'd get a yellowish drink, right? When I looked at that and I had to ask myself, is watermelon the right melon here? Maybe hydromelon is actually a cantaloupe. So I looked into it. It turns out that yellow watermelons that look exactly like that garnish do exist, but they're mainly found in Africa and are completely impossible to buy in my area. I've read that the flavor is very similar to red watermelon, these yellow watermelons. Maybe it's slightly honeyish, but I don't know, I haven't tasted it. I wouldn't be surprised if that was a psychosomatic effect of its color. Uh, if you've got access to yellow watermelon, by all means, use that. But in other parts of the world, such as mine, I think it's fine to make a noble pursuit with red watermelon, which is what we're doing. 60 grams of watermelon, which is also why the final result of the strength won't match the color of the one in the video game exactly. Next, I want three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. Just taking the lime and slicing it straight in half like a damn sociopath. Oof, look at me go. Three quarters of an ounce of lime juice goes in there. Not called for by the in-game recipe, but I don't think that there's any citrus in the game mentioned at all. And the recipe is a guide, not a law. Now I'm gonna add two ounces of tequila. Um, I like a Reposado tequila for this. Um, Fortaleza is one of my favorite tequilas. But I have a lot of Gratona, so let's use La Gratona, huh? How's that sound? Both of these might be available on Curiata using the link in the pin comp below or at drink.curiata.com. Listen, if you don't live near a liquor store or your liquor store doesn't have great supplies and you are one of the 80% of people who live in the US, did that make sense? You are part of 80% of the US population is what I should say, then Curiata might be able to help you out with 
ordering alcohol directly online. It saves you a trip to the store. Uh, they have great stuff. You can check out the How to Drink collection at drink.curiata.com. And if you do decide to buy from them, that's, that's great. It's a good deal for me because I get a little piece of the action. And uh, you get fantastic spirits you'll see on the How to Drink show delivered straight to your home for you. Uh, two ounces of Reposado tequila. And now for like a further dose of the coconut thing here. Um, for the ice in this, I'm gonna use frozen cubes of coconut water that I made. So yeah, these are just frozen little ice cubes made of coconut water. They have a slightly more granular, there's a little sugar content, so they don't freeze quite as hard as regular ice, but that's okay. They are made from, uh, they're pinkish, and that's because uh, Harmless Harvest oxidizes, and that's what I use. It's coconut water, not coconut milk. I haven't tried this coconut milk. Not a crazy idea. I like the clear stuff. Is it entirely necessary to the drink? It's probably not necessary to the drink. I don't really know how much specifically it's adding. Uh, and actually, when I think about it too, like the ice house in question appears to have perfectly normal ice. But I had already kind of committed to making these coconut water ice cubes and they're going to my drink. I don't know what else I'm gonna use with them, but let's put them in there. I'm gonna put 60 grams of frozen coconut water into my drink. Yeah, it works out to like two of these things. Maybe I'll do three, just for good measure. And I'm gonna add a healthy pinch of salt to my blender. And uh, that's it, we're gonna blend this to a puree with the lid on. Here we go. Uh, okay, so my drink is pureed. Uh, I'm gonna get my like apothecary glass or whatever you call this thing. Um, you know what, little trick of the trade. The underlight doesn't really work on anything that's kind of tall anyway, so we'll just keep our rupees there and we'll pour this right in the middle of the table. And uh, hopefully I made enough for this, I thought I did. Oh yeah, perfect. I will now cut a wedge of watermelon, cut a slice of that, perch that on the rim of your glass, like so. It's pretty close to what it looks like in the game, to be honest. There's also some leaves on top of this that look like a little fresh mint. Put that in there as well. Mint and watermelon are a pretty nice combo to begin with. And uh, stick a straw in there. And there it is, a drink. I think you'd cross a hostile desert full of lizophos and sea seals and giant robotic lightning camels to enjoy the noble pursuit. Let's see how it is. Ooh, that is delicious. Balanced tart. You get the tartness right through there. That lime tartness with the palm sugar, which I said has a really unique flavor, and even though there's not a lot in here, shows up. It is like that citrus chocolate flavor combo thing that can happen, but with lime and something that's not quite chocolate, but it's very similar. It's good. I don't know how much work the coconut is doing, but the recipe called for it. Maybe I could have done it a different way, but I like, I, I agree with, you know, I like, I stand by this. The watermelon is present. It's, it's, it's in balance. Like this is right in tension. So you get a little taste of that watermelon, a little bit of that chocolate palm sugar. The whole thing is kind of accentuated by the salt. You get this like just on the edge of puckering lime citrus thing. The, the um, Reposado tequila, you totally get the herbal agave notes of the tequila. It's a noble pursuit. I'm enjoying it. Mm. I like the, the combination of the nose, like the olfactory element here of the mint with the watermelon right next to each other. It's a very enticing smell that really does uh, add to the overall experience and flavor of this drink. Mm. Well, there it is, the Noble Pursuit, a drink that I think is worthy of crisscrossing the Gerudo Desert and braving all of the dangers it holds. How many rupees do you think it's worth? How many rupees for this Noble Pursuit? All of your rupees, my friend? Hmm? I've been making the show for six years. There have been a lot of episodes, and uh, I did some Zelda stuff previously as well. We did Second Potion uh, from the very first Zelda game. Uh, you can check that out in the pin comment below or using the link here at the end of the episode. And, but there's other stuff you might be into. Check out some of these other fun episodes. Why don't you uh, let me know what other video games you want to see me adapt in the comments below. And I'll see you soon with another episode of How to Drink.